My reading journal was actually my favorite of all of my journals for 2023, and I'm so excited to be starting my second ever reading journal for 2024. Hi, it's Erin. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I hope you're excited to set up my reading journal with me and maybe get some ideas for your own reading journal for the new year. I'm using this B5 notebook from Archer and Olive for my 2024 reading journal. It is much bigger than I am used to. It came with the Charming Picnic subscription box, which you can get as a gift box now if you'd like to. I'll have a link to that as well as everything else that I'm using in this video in the description down below. I haven't put my name in this notebook yet. I thought we might decorate that front nameplate page together on a live stream soon. And I'm skipping the first page as well. We're going to come back to that one later. I wanted to get right into this cover page. I didn't realize until I was already halfway through setting this up, but I've actually chosen the same color scheme that I used for my bullet journal, which is purple and green, which is completely unintentional, but I sort of love that they tie into each other now. I had gone through and sketched out in pencil how I wanted all of my functional pages to work, but I didn't really know as far as decoration what I was going to do here. Going in, I just picked a bunch of things I thought looked good together and then experimented. And that's typically how I approach my reading journal. I'm much more casual about it than I am with my bullet journal. And that might be part of why I enjoy it so much as well. Not sure. 2023 was the year that I got back into fantasy. And I think that really showed in a lot of my bullet journal layouts from the past year. So it probably won't come as a surprise that I'm kind of leaning into the fantasy vibes again for my reading journal. I thought about doing something that really featured a lot of books and I was thinking about sort of a sepia brown tone kind of a theme, but that just isn't me. I know that's the direction a lot of people go for their reading journals and it does feel like a natural choice, kind of a dark academia sort of a thing, but it just doesn't feel right to me, at least not right now. Maybe January? We'll have to see. What I am using is some green printed scrapbooking paper pieces. You might recognize them. I used the blue ones for the first setup for the giveaway journal, which is already on my channel if you'd like to see that. These amazing big stained glass stickers. I was just so excited that the B5 journal could accommodate a sticker that big because I've been trying to work out how to use them and they're just kind of too big for the A5, you know? I am using some little books. These are from a sticker sheet from Sticky. I've got these amazing gold crowns and these wonderful ornate letter stickers that I'm going to use for a drop capital for all of my headings throughout and I just love the way this is coming together. Also those bottles from the PET tape from London Gifties, so magical, also really big, great to have a B5 journal so that I have somewhere to use all of this beautiful big decorative stationery that I have accumulated. Now, do you need a cover page or a cover spread like this? Absolutely not. If this isn't something that inspires you, then you can absolutely skip this page. I just like having a place to really give the journal an identity, set up the theme, try things out really, work out creatively how things work together on the page before I get into functional layouts. It's also just a fun art therapy kind of thing, just like putting things on a page together that look good, that don't necessarily have to serve a purpose is really fun. I've ended up with this corner vignette kind of thing, but I felt like it was a little disjointed. So I'm just joining all of the corners together with a little double line border with a gold paint marker. I thought it would also be a good opportunity to use these holographic little potions and crystal stickers that I've had for quite a while, but have never found the right place for. And of course, some magical stamps as well. These are from the Quirky Cup Collective. And I'm just using the little moons and stars to add some sparkles around my heading, fill in a little bit of space without being too visually weighted, you know? I've used a purple metallic paint marker and also the same gold that I used for the borders to do all of this stamping work here. And I also used that purple paint marker for the letter stamps that are in the title as well. That's the reading journal cover spread for 2024 done, and I just love how shiny and sparkly all of these elements are. Speaking of shiny, sparkly things, I want to take a sec to chat about today's sponsor, Ana Luisa, creators of the most beautiful jewelry pieces that bring a bit of extra sparkle and style to your everyday, or you can gift them to bring some extra sparkle and style to someone you love. Ana Luisa's pieces are water resistant, they don't tarnish, they're hypoallergenic, and they come with a two year warranty. That makes them perfect for everyday wear, and also as a gift you can give confidently, knowing your gift receiver will be able to wear their pieces for years. I'm super into celestial themes lately, especially after reading so much fantasy this past year. Celestial themed jewelry feels like a really subtle way I can bring magic and fairy tales from my favorite books out into the real world with me, if that makes sense. The sky ring set is so lovely for this. It's a set of two rings, a little star and a little crescent moon that you can wear separately or the way I love them most, stacked together. The moon cradles the little star so beautifully. It's just such a romantic combo. I also love how well they complement my Lucy bracelet, which I've had for a little while now. The little stars on the bracelet tie in so well with the star ring, so I've been wearing them together a lot, even though gold jewelry isn't usually my go-to. But when I'm wearing these and I catch a little glimpse of my hands, it's just such a magical moment. 
I also wanted to show you these. These are the Dobby gemstone earrings. And the second I saw that gorgeous green, I knew I wanted to give these to my lovely mother-in-law, Sally, for Christmas. We had our Christmas celebration early this past weekend, and I actually rigged our family secret Santa to make sure I'd draw her so that I could give her these. Green is her favorite color, and I actually looked up Aventurine, which is the stone they use for the Dobby earrings. It's supposed to be the luckiest of all crystals, so I love that they have that extra layer of meaning, as well as being super pretty. And like, look at that smile. When you see that on somebody you've just given a gift to, it's such a great feeling. If you've got a special jewelry wearer in your life that you still need to get a Christmas gift for, or if you just wanna get a sneaky little Christmas present for yourself, no judgment, I do have really good news for you. Right now you can score up to 35% off site-wide with Ana Luisa's Cyber Monday sale. The discount increases the more pieces you purchase. So if you buy two items, you'll get 25% off, three items, you'll get 30% off, or four or more items, you'll get 35% off. You can use my link in the description to shop the sale. Big thanks to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and bringing a little bit of magic, not just to my everyday, but now to my mother-in-law's too. Back to the reading journal and the next page we're going to set up is an index. This is an unusual one for me, especially in a journal that doesn't have numbered pages. This one doesn't have numbered pages, but I can always add numbers myself. And in fact, I think I probably will, although I forgot to do that in this video. So <laughs> that's something I'll have to work on later. I usually read somewhere between six to 10 books a month. So I like to have a separate monthly layout for each of my reading journal months just to separate things in my mind and have a good excuse to play with stationery and do something fun in my journal, honestly. And part of my idea for my index was that it will give me some data about how many pages I typically need for a month in my journal, which would be really helpful to have. I'm also not totally sure how long this journal will last me. My previous reading journal did over a year. It was kind of, August, September of 2022 until the end of 2023. So if this journal does more than one year, at least I'll be able to write that in the index, you know? And I'm introducing a washi tape here that I didn't use on the cover spread. It's this beautiful metallic kind of a moss green. I bought this when I was at Kinokuniya in Sydney a couple of weeks ago, and I just fell in love with this. I got it in a couple of different shades as well, and I will be using a couple of those later on in the layout. I love a solid washi tape just to be a little layer of something that sits behind something else. And the fact that these ones are shiny is just so amazing. My next page is to define my book ratings, and I'm going to be adopting the core pile system this year, kind of as an experiment. At the moment, I just rate books based on my kind of gut instinct when I finish them, which is not very scientific, and that's fine. But I wanted to give this a go just so that I could give things a more objective rating. And sometimes I will give a book less stars than it actually deserves because I'll still be thinking about it months later. So clearly it needs to move up. I figure this way it's maybe a more accurate rating. I first came across this system in Jashi Corinne's video featuring Monica of Bibliophile by Night's completed reading journal and she was using this system and it blew my mind a little bit. So the way it works, you have these different, it's an acronym, you know, core pile. C is for characters, A is for atmosphere or setting, W is for writing style, P is for plot, I is for intrigue, L is for logic and relationships, and E is for enjoyment. For each book you read, you give it a rating for each of those categories out of 10. And I think that's pretty fair because sometimes, you know, a book can have a great plot, but terrible writing, or maybe a nothing much happens plot, but it has a really great atmosphere and vibe. So when you add up all of those scores, you'll get a total out of 70. You divide that total by seven, which gives you a decimal pointed number. And then that number corresponds to a particular star rating. Now I'm a pretty easy person to please when it comes to books. I have noticed that I give almost everything approximately a four star rating. So I'm interested to see if that changes for the new year when I'm using this system, we'll have to see. That said, I have also started to, particularly in the last year, just not finish books that I'm not having a good time with. So I don't know if we'll see very many zero, one and two star books for 2024, but the rating is there to support them just in case. And I would finish them if they were a book club book or something, you know. I would push through and finish the book if it's for book club purposes. But I have a feeling I'll be flipping back to this page quite a bit while I get the hang of this new rating system. So it's good for me to have it as a reference in the journal for whenever I need it, which will be every book for probably at least the first month of 2024. 
That's the index and the rating page done, so we can flip over now, and this one is going to be just a list of all of the books that I read in the year. And in order to save some time on decorating, I'm going to make a Dutch door out of the right page here, just cutting off some of the paper so that the page underneath shows through. This page from my 2023 reading journal actually ended up almost exactly like this, although I ended up adding this little Dutch door flap page in later because I ran out of space, so I'm trying to make sure I allow a lot more room to write all of the books that I read this year. This is one of those cases where I'd rather have too much space rather than not enough. Although it did occur to me that in cutting down the page and making a smaller page here for the space that I'll actually be writing book titles on, I've pretty much cut it down to the size of an A5 notebook, so possibly that's just a sign that I'm not super comfortable with the B5 size yet, but we'll see how we go. And I will be using all of that extra space around the outside for decoration, so it's not like the page won't get used, it'll just get used for pretty things. This is something else I picked up while I was in Sydney. It's just a white washi tape. I got it from uh, Muji this time. And I'm just using it to reinforce those bits of paper that are left over from where I cut away so that they sit down flat against the next page of the book and then they don't compromise the binding or anything like that. I was very smart when I got these letter stickers. I actually got two packets of them because you run out of the most used letters really quickly. So it was lucky that I did because I already used an R earlier on the reading journal cover page and I used another R on the rating page, which means that I'd actually run out of R's already just having set up two spreads. So if you find yourself investing in flake letter stickers like this, definitely grab more than one pack so that you can get all the way through a theme. You'd best believe I learned that the hard way. Now that this spread has started to take shape, I can tell you a bit more about how it will actually function. So each page has two columns on it, including each side of that flappy Dutch door section in the middle there. And I'm literally just gonna list out the book by title and author in order with a number as I read them throughout the year. It's exactly what I did for my 2023 journal and I found it works really well for me. I'm not sure yet if I'll include the star rating here or not. It might be doubling up on information, so we'll have to wait and see. I know some people do this with the actual book covers and I think that looks incredible. I'm just not sure I could be bothered with all that fussing around. Now I am going to jump in and decorate this. I'm so sorry I didn't realize my camera was out of focus, so I sped that bit up, but we're back to normal now, so all is well. See how you can see some of the decoration regardless of which side that Dutch door is flipped to? I love that about Dutch doors. It makes decorating so much more speedy and efficient and I love it. You know what I don't love though? The gold washi tape. Actually, I do love it. I just think it's a bit too much of a different element here. So I'm actually gonna peel a lot of this stuff up and replace it with the pinkish purplish washi tape instead. I just feel like that fits with the theme a little bit better. Sorry, gold. I'll use you again later. Another spread done, let's turn the page. And the next one I'm going to set up is for my reading goal for 2024. I am going to have this in Goodreads as well, so I don't necessarily need it in my journal, but I think it's fun. Last year I did this as a bookshelf design and I colored in a book spine for each book that I read. This time I'm going with something a little bit less visually impactful, but I wanna read a lot more books, maybe for 2024. I'm setting my goal to a much loftier 100. Last year's goal was 60 books and I hit it in September, which I was not expecting because I just scraped through to 50 books in 2022. So I did not expect to read that much more, but I just got into audiobooks a lot this year and my comfortable listening speed is about 1.6, 1.7 speed, so I listen to them fairly quickly. I work from home, I listen to audiobooks while I'm working, I drive a lot for work, I listen to audiobooks while I'm driving. It just has meant that I read more books, and please don't compare your goal to mine if you read less than that, because that is totally valid. There is no correct number of books to read in a year, and honestly, I may not come anywhere near 100. I might not want to read as much next year just because, I don't know, maybe I won't have time. So if I don't get anywhere near that goal, I'm not going to beat myself up over it or anything. It's just a page for a bit of fun, you know. Reading is supposed to be a fun hobby, and keeping a reading journal, I believe, is also supposed to be a fun hobby, <laughs> so, you know. Also, this page was really long and arduous to set up. All of those little boxes took me a really long time, so I'm definitely going to try and use this page. I 
I borrowed this idea from someone I saw online actually. I think it was actually a blog post on the Archer and Olive website about reading journaling written by Emily from Planned and Planted who keeps one of the most incredible reading journals I have ever seen so she is definitely an authority on this. My reading goal page here is a direct ripoff of hers so don't be thinking that I'm the creative one here, this is all Emily. And this was my favourite part of her design. I've added an extra row for it at the bottom here actually. For each month she coloured in her goal books with a different colour to represent that month so you can see how many books towards your goal you read each month. I just thought that was a cool extra visual sort of fun little extra data point touch so I'm stealing that one too. Ready to be visited by my cat? Here he is! While he's visiting we're going to set up this anticipated reads page on the right here which is for any books that come out in 2024 that I am looking forward to, that I am anticipating, I just write them in here. So each of these boxes corresponds to a month. Any books that come out in January, in February, in March I'll just write them in their corresponding little boxes here so I know what I'm looking forward to. Right now I don't know if I actually have that many anticipated reads for next year but I'm sure they will pop up along the way. I think the last book in the Love Light series by BK Borison is coming in 2024, although I don't know exactly which month, but that's one I'm definitely anticipating. And I know there's a new Crescent City book coming, but I actually haven't read any of Crescent City yet. I've been working my way through the other Sarah J Maas properties throughout 2023, so I guess Crescent City is next once I get through Throne of Glass, so I probably will be interested in that book although I don't know if I'll get to it before it comes out the new Crescent City one anyway I would love to know what books you're anticipating the release of for 2024 let me know in the comments down below which books you're most looking forward to and when they're coming out so that I can also put them on my list maybe Let's turn the page and move on to my series tracker. This is one I didn't think I would use that much that ended up becoming a very important spread for me, so it's very important that it also comes with me into my new journal. It's an interesting one here because I need to add in the titles of the series that I'm tracking. Everything else I'm sort of leaving blank, but I need to add the titles so I can see how many spaces I need to leave for each of the books in those series, so there is a little sticky beak at what I'm actually reading here. Although I'm not filling them out in this video so you won't be able to see how many of each series I've read but you will be able to see that in my reading journal flip through which will be coming sometime in December too so keep an eye out for that video and hit subscribe if you want to see it especially if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. Basically the way this series tracker works is I just put down the title of the series and the author in a purple line and then a little box for each of the books that are either already released or are listed on Goodreads as like a forthcoming release. And I'll usually put the number for each of them in there. Sometimes when there are novellas and short stories and stuff in between then there'll be like a 3.4 book or a 3.5 or whatever, especially in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. My god there are so many books in that series. And I'll usually use a really tiny fine liner to sideways write the title of each book next to it, which is why I've left a little bit of a gap underneath each of the boxes too, so I can write at least a shorthand version of the titles so I'm reading the books in the right order, so I have something to refer to when I'm trying to work out what the next book of a series is. I like that it lets me have a lot of data across a single spread, so that's always good. For now I'm only filling out the left side. I am going to decorate the right page as well but it's not going to have any series information on it yet because it's going to be for any new series that I start in 2024 so you know you got to allow a bit of space to grow with your journal and there are so many series that I'd like to start in 2024 it's a bit overwhelming so I'm not going to write them down until I've actually started them just in case I never get around to it you know you know how it is.
that's the series tracker all set up so let's turn the page and start on the spread I'm using for my two book clubs which is very exciting although I'm setting this up wrong I didn't think about the size of my letter stickers and I didn't allow enough space for them to sit at the top if I'd really been thinking about it properly I probably would have just decided to move the heading to the bottom of the page which actually would have been some cool variation from the previous pages but I didn't think about that until later and I'd already gone through after realizing my mistake and used a white paint marker to move all of the horizontal lines so that I could have my heading at the top of the page which was a lot of work but hey we got there in the end it doesn't look too terrible honestly it looks all right on camera it looks a little bit worse in person but that's okay I'm happy to just live with it it's fine this is actually pretty much the same layout from the previous anticipated read setup, so it's actually a calendar. The left page is for The Literary Ladies, which is the book club that I have with some friends. We don't really firmly stick to a book a month, but it seems to average out that way, so I figure a monthly page like this will work pretty well. I'm going to use the space to probably put a little book cover, but maybe not, I haven't decided yet, for each book that we choose, and then some stats about who it was that picked the book and the title and the author and stuff like that. Maybe even the rating here. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know entirely how I'll use this page yet, but we'll see. On the right page, I'm having some information for the Page Majors, which is the book club that I am now running inside the Discord that is for my hand-lettered heroes channel members, which is so exciting. This one is a little bit more strictly a book to a month kind of a setup because I am kind of the one who's making the decisions here so I can make it run for as long as I want it to. It's very new, we only started doing it in November and we're having a few little teething problems at the moment because books that are readily available for me to get through my library here in Australia are not so readily available for some people in the States to get and so on and so forth. So I figure having this page to plan this out in advance is going to be really helpful. I just want everyone who wants to be involved to be able to be involved. So, you know, a little bit of research may be required to make sure that books are available in all of the places and for people to put holds on them through their library or request that they are transferred from another library or whatever it is. So if you'd like to join the Page Majors book club, there is a link to the channel membership in the description down below. You can find out some more information there. There are still a few pages to go for this setup and this one I'm stealing from just about every reading journal video that I have watched in the past couple of years. This one is a book bracket, which didn't appeal to me at the start of last year, but appeals to me quite a bit now, so I'm gonna give it a go. I have no idea who originated this concept, so I don't really know who to credit here, but it's definitely not my idea, so I don't want to take any credit for it. Basically, you pick a favorite book for each month and then you battle them out against each other in a sort of tournament system to find out not very scientifically which one wins for the year. In previous years, I think this didn't appeal to me because I was like, well, what if I have three five-star books? How do I choose the one that goes into the book bracket? But now I'm gonna be trying out that core pile system. I can pick the one that has the highest core pile score and that can be the book that goes into the book bracket. So we'll have to wait and see how this goes. It's just a bit of fun. I think it's gonna be a fun time. And once there's more information on the page here, I'll show you sort of more visually how it works in case it's not an idea that you've come across before. But for now, let's just keep drawing boxes and adding decoration to the page. Just for the sake of my own clarity of using this page, I've decided to jump in with my letter stamps and add a little something to trigger my mind for each of the boxes here. They might not all make sense at a glance, so I will explain what they all mean once they're all down on the page. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show you how it works.
Okay, now that all of the important information is down on the page, let's have a little rundown on how this whole book bracket thing actually works. So for each month, I'll choose my highest rated core pile book and I will put the book cover for January in the top, obviously February under that. Whichever book wins out of January and February goes into the next row. I'm calling it round one. So whichever wins round one goes into round two. Round two goes against the next round two book and the winner of that goes into round three. Round three books go against round three books and then the winners move into the semi-final. The two semi-final books of the first half of the year battle out for the final and then the top book from each half of the year battles it out to be the winner. This is something I'll be updating in my monthly reading journal videos throughout the year so if you want to see how it's coming together check those out as the year progresses. We've just got two spreads left for this setup but they are both actually for the same purpose and that is my what I call my maybe next which is basically just a TBR or to be read system but I don't like the pressure that that term puts on reading. I like my reading to be very fun and casual despite all of this reading journal setup stuff which might make you think otherwise. I do like it to be fun and casual which is why the term to be read just feels a little bit too heavy handed and ordery for me so I like to call it maybe next instead. I'm also a bit of a mood reader, so if I write something down on a list and then choose not to read it, I don't want to feel bad about that either. So maybe next. It works. It works for me. I did this pretty much in the same layout for my previous reading journal for 2023, and I had four columns for that one, I think. I had them divided into different genres, so I'm going to do that again because I felt like it worked really well, but I only had the one spread, and I actually found that I stopped adding books to it that I was interested in because I was running out of space, and I didn't want to run out of space, and that's not the point. So I'm doing the same layout twice, just about. I'm orienting it a little bit to the right on this one and just having three columns with a bit of space for decoration, and I'll actually do the exact same thing again on the next spread except I'll orient the boxes where I'll write the maybe next books to the left. I'm the first to admit I don't really read from a lot of different genres. Most of what I read falls into romance or fantasy or potentially even the overlap of romanticy. So I'm adding columns that are specifically for those two genres here and then just one that's called Other on the right side as well. I will have three more columns on the next spread so I'm not allocating any headings to those ones in this video but if I decide that I want to I can always add that later and it can be overflow from this page or it can be, you know, maybe I'll get into mysteries this year or something. I don't know. So room to grow once again, just like we did with the series tracker. I like to have room to grow. And I can't just add an extra page into this journal quite in the same way that I did for my previous reading journal because this is the only B5 book that I own so I don't really have another notebook that I can rob a page from. Although I suppose I could just put an A5 page and make it act like a Dutch door and that would be okay. I don't know. Better to just have the space and maybe use it and maybe not need to grow into it. I don't know. We'll see. I would like to use it if I have the space but we'll just see how the year plays out shall we.
Remember when we skipped that very first page back at the beginning? That's because I'm using it for something kind of boring, which is why I'm doing it right at the end of this video. This is just for my grid spacing page, mostly because this is a journal size that I'm not familiar with, so it's useful for me to be able to see page divisions. I don't expect that I'll be needing to divide pages into halves and thirds and quarters quite as much as I would in a normal bullet journal, since this is for a reading journal, but I wanted to have it there in case I do need it. This means I don't have to do the calculations for these spaces again. It's really just a reference so that I can flip back to this page if I'm like, how do I divide this page horizontally into thirds? And I can see what the numbers are and then I don't have to do as much counting and calculating as I would have to do otherwise because I don't like maths. And with that, my reading journal is all set up for 2024. Thank you so much for planning with me. Let's have a little flip through everything that we've just set up together. Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below what your most anticipated book is for 2024. I definitely want to check out all of your recommendations. And also don't forget to check out Anna Luisa to take advantage of their Cyber Monday sale. Finish up your Christmas shopping nice and early and get some beautiful pieces for your loved ones or maybe for yourself. I can't wait to start using this journal. I wonder what the very first read of 2024 will be. I definitely don't know that this early in December, so that'll be an interesting thing to ponder. If this reading journal setup was a little bit too involved for you, then I recommend that you check out my reading journal setup for 2023. I'll pop a link to that at the top here so you can access that really quickly and easily. And underneath that is a playlist of all of my reading journal videos that I have ever made in case you want to see some inspiration or maybe get some inspiration for your next reads because I do also talk about actual books in those. Catch you again soon. Bye.